things can affect them how things can affect them for the long term. Um, majority of the customers I see, their, their long-term goals is to basically own homes. Um, so it's basically um, showing them how being financially disciplined early on can definitely benefit them in the long run. But you know, uh, we're now in an era where we see, see first and what now rather than see now and, and, and work towards it later. So I think that's the most reoccurring hurdle, uh, telling the customer that a credit card increase right now is not really the best move for you or taking a small loan out for a vacation um, every year is not the best option, you know, when, you know, well, we live on in the Hi, sorry about that. I'm at the office and someone came to the door. Uh, my, my humblest apologies. Uh, Dimitri, you were saying that uh, differentiating between the customer's needs and wants and having them determine what it is. Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to know, even though I've been on the banking for a little long, <laughs> the challenges are still the same. Uh, no matter what age group they're in, whether they're, they're boomers, Millennials, the next one is the X thing. Everybody want everything today, but nobody want to do the planning towards it. Um, excellent. I think this course is going to help you uh, a lot in terms of positioning uh, your dialogue towards facing that. Uh, particularly when you get into time value and when you marry this with maybe young person that you may be coming into contact with uh, and, you know, sort of like letting them know that today they may not have an abundance of wealth, but the greatest asset they have on their side is time. And if you was right, when you marry that with money, uh, they can accomplish a lot of things. Right. Thank you, sir. Paula. Hi, Paula. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Tell us about yourself, Paula. Um, uh, my name, like my screen says, is Paula Hilaire. I work to CFAL. I've been there for about three years. Prior to that, I was working at an offshore bank. Um, I currently work in the settlements department. So I deal with the allocation of interest and dividends and the reconciliation of those interest and dividend payments. So well, you want to teach the course? I, I can come become the student. You work for Big C Farm? Wow. <laughs> Well, you, you work for even a better company, Power X. Power Muscle. There's another Sophia. Yeah, the okay. VPs, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so you're already in the settlements department, which is a very critical thing. You know, a lot of people get better to the shape with uh, the trading aspect of it. But just as critical is uh, the settlement as aspect of it because what a lot of people don't understand is that buying a financial asset, yes, it's the equivalent of a buying property. Yeah. And those records got to be straight. It's like when you go and buy a piece of property, they send the thing off to the registry office to be registered and recorded. And the exact property got to be registered and recorded in your name, or later on you could have a big mix up. Same thing happens with security. So you have a very important. Wow, wow. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> so, I mean, what did you do in your prior offshore encounter? Like, what, you had a prior job or the prior offshore? Um, I worked. I worked in back office, so okay. primarily dealt with client requests, like their wire transfers, if they wanted to, um, if they needed to execute a trade, so I would send instructions to the traders. Fantastic. I mean, I, I see that you see look up, oh, I work in back office, like, like <laughs> any of your, I work in back office in our work lives, okay? And it's the most okay. critical job. I'm in charge of back office operations. Okay. Okay. And then on the other side, you got these people who are on the cutting edge. You meet with the clients and you know, schmooze with the clients and have all the glamorous jobs. Not all the time. <laughs> back office operations is like a car dealership, okay? You could have those people that are there to sell the car. Uh, they smooch in the client and they get the sale done. But what happens after the client has the car and something go wrong with the car, but they need after sales services? You there in the back office protect the reputation of your company. That's a very, very critical thing. Okay, so fantastic, excellent. So how long has it been a CFA? Three years. Okay, all right. So what is your long-term goal? Um, to be more knowledgeable when it comes to financial planning. Okay. So I think I have a good understanding on how the securities and trading works, but I think my weakness was financial planning. Oh, that challenge, you never do. But you recognize something that may be a challenge or an area that you may have to improve it. That's another thing I, I, I never accept the word in my dictionary of fail. You know, people, well, I said this is not, but I fail it. No, you were not successful in this round this time. But you, you, you were successful in the time you took the venture to walk into this classroom throw away all your inhibitions and take the challenge of trying to expand your knowledge. That's always a pass in my book. <laughs> That's always, I take a lot of courage sometimes. I'm holding down a job. The only thing more compounded like that is being married and having a family. Right? To Shay, thank you for coming on. Good to have you on board. Thank you. Bonnet. Hi, Vanessa. Yes, yes. Good okay. day. Good morning. Sorry. That's okay. How are you doing today? I am doing good. Excellent. Excellent. Tell, um, us, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I work in private banking. You're the only person I see here on my schedule that didn't have where they work. I didn't. Now, now, hold on now, Mrs. Barney. Yeah, you didn't say where you work. So let me pencil that in. Where do you work? I work at IPG Family Office. Well, okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Then tell us about IPG. Well, hmm. I don't even know what to, where, where to begin. You mean your you mean your experience is that vast that you mean definitely. <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> okay, just at the high points. Okay. Um. Well, I could just tell you a little bit about my job, and that's about it. Um. I work at IPG Family Office. I am a relationship manager there. I have been there now eight years. You see, I make eight years. Wow. And um, not in that capacity. So I started out in accounts and I worked my way up. Okay. Um, so my background is accounting. Okay. Yeah. So I moved to the front office because I wanted a feel of how it just face to facing with clients, face to face mm -hmm. clients. Um, 
in that field. I deal with wealth management, I deal with private banking, I deal with trust because it's a small office. You basically are stretched thin. You have to do the really small stuff, even as faxing your main, um, querying your own packages. So it's a small office. Um, I deal with high network clients locally and internationally. Um, I like my job. I have a new aspect as concierge service. Um, surprisingly, I call myself the, I call it a, a, a professional gopher in a way as small as going to the doctor with my client. So, you know, like us Bahamians, we would say, oh, you know, we could outsource different things, but no, I do it all. My job is well-rounded. Fantastic. Um, you use the term IPG family office. Yes. What is a family office? A family office has the structure is, um, you would have a protectorship. You would have a trust, meaning one big family, or we have numerous families that have wealth management that have different aspects of companies, trusts, assets, all in one, and we administer them. They, or we would manage them, all aspects of it. So we have numerous big families in our small office that we administer or we would manage okay. on a daily basis. Just, just so you know, uh, at one point in time, the family office concept, if she said, like you guys have a family that has wealth. Yes. A lot of wealth. Yes. And they now give it over to these people, the management. They call it a family office. Yes. And what that person does is manages their wealth in terms of investment in funds. And like she said, if you want trust and so forth. It used to be that people who were looking for money used to go to what they call uh, uh, the banks, uh, the offshore bank, like a C file or and so forth. A oh, credit Swiss. Yes. Yeah, uh, they were going to go to the bigger institutions. However, in the last 10 years, Family offices, yes, taken over funding projects. That's how big this market is. Yes. Uh, uh, they, uh, so they used to go to the underwriting banks. That's what they used to do in the past. They the okay. mm -hmm. Now they go to family office managers because what I've what I've noticed is that the family itself, the structure or the person is now more involved. Yeah. Before time, it would say, for instance, we can use Credit Suisse. And because it's such a big institution, they would then have nominee companies that would then just manage it. But now we actually have two or three members of the name, say just to use a name, say role. Right. Who, who names is role, their last the surname is a role, mm -hmm. and they are actually on the board managing the right. company. They're involved. The they yeah. just don't give it over to the family office manager. They're involved with it. Right. But this concept of family offices have grown to such extent that they are now the number one source of funding. Yes. Uh, they're taken over from even venture capitalists, they're taken over from the underwriting banks and so forth. People go to these things called family offices. They've become a very, very influential entity within the whole financial structure. Correct. Uh, what else? And like you say, I'm telling you one thing. You may say, well, I do a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. Embrace it. Because your counterparts who may be stationed in New York, they become specialists. Right. And they only do one thing. They only know how to do one thing. You're getting the benefit of 
you're seeing the whole structure. And right. someday, I hope you get together with Mr. Dimitri so that when he starts talking to his clients, uh, he can start talking about trying to build generational wealth, like all these family offices. Right. <laughs> No, I, I'm telling you, I mean, that's one of the, in terms of the financial literacy uh, paths that we are, as a people, are on, and I, and I say this, and Miguel, I hope I don't get in trouble, particularly people of color. I totally agree, Mr. We haven't, no, no. We haven't grasped that concept of generational wealth. Yeah. Now, Mr. Dimitri, nothing against you. I know you're going to make your car loan and everything like that. I can knock you for that. But we got to get past this. You can't leave a Lexus on. <laughs> there, that's a different topic for this one. Thank you for sharing with us. Uh, I think you have a fantastic opportunity in, in your career. And this course is so well suited to you. I agree. Uh, one last thing. Uh, my email is can it? Uh, yeah, let me give my email to everybody. Kenneth K E N N E T H Donathan D O N A T H A N at gmail.com. My cell contact is 424. 8688. Mr. Donnan, I thought that you work for Central Bank because I get your emails now. You always send out information regarding the market, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the stock, Donald, everything. Is, all right. Now you know the path I am on, the path I've chosen, which I think is a calling to me. I, as I told you before, to improve the financial literacy of our country, okay? Yes. Uh, what I have found is there are a lot of people, even people you would think, professionals, uh, would have knowledge that they don't know certain things about their own backyard, all right? And I have a business, and I cannot advertise here, but I do, financial coaching, okay, as a, as a part of one of the things I do along this pathway towards increasing financial literacy amongst our persons. And particularly, my particular target market is uh, persons of, in the lower socioeconomic strata. But it is my belief that we as a country can't not move ahead until we pull them around this. Mm. Correct. Because uh, it will help us solve a lot of social issues, crime, so forth. And I'm trying to get persons past the concept of the government supposed to take care of you, the government supposed to be everything for you. Uh, no, there are ways that you can stand up on your own two feet. So I started that investment little club of over 10 years. How did you get your way on the mic? How did you get this? <laughs> Another lady introduced me, Mrs. Nadine Frazier from Insurance. Yes. Yeah, because yeah, she's about doing the same thing that you're doing, you know, getting young people into just well of knowledge about financial services and stuff like that. So she put me on to your email. Okay, and so I just send out information like uh, people complain about, and we'll get into it a little bit later, that, oh, the bank don't pay us no interest on funds and so forth. And so I asked them, have you ever heard about government security? Know what they is. Right. I said, and these professional people. Uh, and I began to tell them 
about government security, and they think you need, uh, and I, I can tell you a lot of data that I, um, I can tell you, market today, you need a big gunk of money to invest. <laughs> no, you don't. I, I don't think we can invest as little as $100 mm -hmm. in government security. And government security is taking interest semi annually, ranging from three to six and a half percent. Right. right. Even the TDs, even the term deposits, I think that's what you call them. Yeah, right. You're talking about T bills. T bills, T bills. Yeah. They have a higher interest. Yeah, but the only thing with T bills is they're geared towards professional investors because you need a minimum of about a hundred thousand to invest in T bills. Right. Uh, and the central bank uh, filled orders of individuals before they filled professional orders. So an individual who is investing as much as 250000 to get priority before they give it to a thing. And what they're trying to do is get the retail market involved. Okay. And a lot of people don't even know about government security. And they're the safest investment in the they're the safest, they pay the highest interest rate, and they're very liquid because the central bank stands ready to buy the securities back from individuals, not institutions. Okay. In case of need. So, Ms. Anders, I ask you one thing, kudos to you, spread the gospel, okay? Don't just keep it in the okay? Yes, sir. I spread the gospel. There's a movement New York. Uh, my people, they always talk about my people. Uh, they, they release statistics. Oh, the average for him, you know, is less than a thousand dollars in savings and so forth, like that. And I only smile to myself because what they need to measure, which they can, is the unbanked. Because people don't save with the banks anymore. They save in the ACU. Yeah. They just even take their money to the Sabas and put it in this account. <laughs> when they give to the bank, they've become very disillusioned in the bank to a large extent. Because A, the bank pays them nothing. And when they need the bank, in their mind, the bank always disowns them, so to speak. Right? And it isn't that, it's just the bank has its own policy. So, but a lot of it has to do with them educating themselves in terms of time. So, again, again, mom, so I need you, Masan, to send me your telephone contact. I didn't ask it on the phone, but I'm sure you don't want to give it over the phone. Uh, oh, oh, 429. Oh, okay. 429-3305. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Alden. Are you there, Ms. Alden? Hi, Ms. Alden. A very pleasant good morning, yes, um, yes sir. No, look at Ms. Alden. You look like you just step off the red carpet. I look like I step off the red carpet? Fashion is still glasses. How are you doing? I'm just taking it day by day and step by step. Um, laid my husband to rest last week, Saturday. Oh, my condolences. Thank you. We were together for 32 years. So, yeah. Wow. wow. Very, very, very good. Yeah. Um, so, I'm sorry I missed the class last, last week, Saturday. That would have been the reason I sent a message to Mr. Checkley. I didn't realize we would have had a new lecture. So my apologies for that. So just to give you a little about myself in a synopsis, um, I've been in banking um, for almost three decades. I work at Bank of the Bahamas. I'm the assistant manager at the collections department. I focus more on the front end collections. Um, my reasoning for wanting to do this course, I feel as if it can enhance um, my knowledge and also help me to help others because in my arena, um, you see a lot of people hurting, especially after what we would have went through, um, not just here in the Bahamas, but you know, that was worldwide, the pandemic, it, it, it affected everyone. 
And so now, how do we move forward? You know, I've been hearing the word normal for quite some time, get back to some normalcy, but do we ever? And I think this course for me would be to try and help someone not to try and get back to the normal, because if you're getting back to the normal, then that means you're doing the same behaviors, but to how we can be better prepared. So if we were to ever have some type of economic impact, again, we would know how to not just survive, but to try, you know, and be successful at it. So if I can just help one person, then I think my living would not be in vain, but education is definitely key. Thank you. Uh, y'all gotta excuse me when y'all see me duck off. I even check in so you know uh, I can't put some some but Miss Oden well said well said uh I always tell people after the pandemic we got out of that well let's start preparing for the next one because one thing you know for sure another one coming <laughs> Don't be the one starting on the national and you're on the line trying to get to a 50 assistant. Uh, and then in your capacity as a, uh, I don't want to say a collector, I, I, I rather call you a rehabilitator. Uh, people, a lot of people are not dishonest. Yes. The things go wrong, but their error is they didn't plan for things going wrong, so they had no box for it. So they're sitting in front of you, and I hope you take that opportunity to, 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 to rehabilitate them as opposed to chastising them. I mean, you got to do my job. Yeah, well, my term, what I use with people is life happens. Okay. And when that happens, you know, what do we do? You know, not because you are in collections, that means that you're a bad person. Life just happens. And so I, I, I really take my role really serious. And I look at myself as to be someone who's contributing to the positive side of the Bahamas because, you know, I can't leave you down. So it's my goal to see like you, and you use the correct word that I use, rehabilitate. I have to turn this, this, this process around. So yeah, today, you know, things, you're struggling. You know, but we're not here to take your home, take your property, take your vehicle, take your stuff. We want to try and see how best we can help you. And in that process, we need to help you manage as you go along, because sometimes people are just, you know, they just have poor managing habits. And they make bad decisions. Yeah, you know, we walking around with three phones. Do you really need three? <laughs> Come on. Really? Uh, I don't know. I, I understand. I understand. Uh, you you took the words out of my mouth, you know. Uh, they just tell me, uh, Miss Darwin, you're leaving your phone. But if you're trying to get rid of this one phone I got. <laughs> <laughs> when I go to the food store, the, 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 the cashier has come running on the door. Miss Darwin, Miss Darwin, you leave your phone. I said, Mom, no, no, man, I need that for you to answer for me for the day. <laughs> but I, I I see uh with your personality, you are the right personality for that position you're in. Thank uh, you. Uh you just got the right personality type. You're there, like people will open up to you and really tell you what went wrong as opposed because they don't see you as a person who has come to chastise them. Yeah, your demeanor doesn't say that. Mm -mm. <laughs> so excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Ms. Major, Sophia Major. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Ms. Major, cut the, cut the camera on. I have to cut it. Oh, there we go. Uh oh. You back? Okay, there we go. All right, all right. There you go. This pretty smart. Let me see. <laughs> Good morning. My Good name morning. is Sophia Major. I work at um, Britannia Securities Limited, which is a broker dealer here in the Bahamas. Um, I am the deputy um, head of operations. So I heard you talking about back office earlier. So um, I assist with managing that whole process 
um, of the back office functions at Britannia. Um, I got into this, um, I wanted to take this course because not only um, am I in the private banking in, um, industry, I'm also, um, I also do have a passion for just teaching persons how to um, save and budget and invest so that um, just for their future and to you know help them along their journey to financial independence. Um, and so I'm taking this course to um, just gain more knowledge so that I could give even more um, specialized um, advice in terms of how to assist persons on their financial journey and making sure that they're budgeting, that they're saving, that they're investing um, correctly. Um, just so when those pandemics or those rainy days come, um, it doesn't throw them in a tailspin. So um, that's about it for me. <laughs> Fantastic. How long? Maybe I missed it. How long have you been at Britannia? Well, I've only been at Britannia for four months. Um, I've worked at several banks. I've been in this industry um, straight out of college. So for the past almost 25 years. So um, I've worked for quite a few different um, offshore banks um, and Britannia has been my latest. Wow, I couldn't believe you had all that experience because you only look for 16. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Fantastic. Well said. Uh, uh, please continue on. And I'd like all of you guys, uh, if you're with families uh, or you have nieces and nephews, uh, talk about this stuff around the dinner table. Why am I saying that? Why would I say that? Sophia, why do you think uh, that? Uh, <laughs> because I mean, everybody needs to be informed. Um, and this is a topic that I think a lot of people don't talk about, which is why they always have, um, we always see it, a lot of issues with finances and people in serious debt um, because it's not talked about. Um, I know a lot of times when I, even when I do little seminars or workshops on, on um, with um, I'm talking about um, setting financial goals. I, I always tell them too, like even, but I say, if you're single and you're two persons about to get married, when you go to your marriage counselor, I think you should also go to a financial counselor as well um, because you need to talk about your finances. You need to know um, what your partner has and how you're going to handle their debt or their financial issues on top of yours. So, and those things aren't discussed. Um, and then when you get into a marital relationship, then finances is one of the things that, you know, um, usually breaks up Amen. the relationship or, or causes, you know, causes a lot of issues. So if you talk about it early, um, you know, I like to, I would, I love to talk to young people, especially those that are just getting into their money or you know, just starting off with jobs and getting their own salaries and being independent, making sure that they, they set you know, sensible goals so that, um, and they know about it and that they are aware so that they can set you know, goals that will help them in the future. I absolutely agree with everything you have just said. Uh, you keep that up, um, like I said, I mean, I was underneath your voice, but it ain't, ain't nothing called love to walk out the door. I find out. <laughs> <laughs> love is get up. You go when there's no finance to it. Come to love you in to the next person. You always sign up to be broke and that's for you. Uh, right. <laughs> and, the <laughs> and the other thing is, I talk about talking around the dinner table is when you have the kids sitting around. Let's start teaching them from a very early age. You know, that, again, we, our people tend to try to hide from the kids uh, our financial position, particularly if they're 
humble financial positions because they don't want them to know we poor. Guess what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the big riddle is what are we doing to improve ourselves? Because they do not teach this stuff in school. School, true. They don't teach it in school. So the only place those children can learn it is from home. Mm -hmm. And they got to be able to walk by the fridge and see the budget. Up. Another thing you said, when you get married, you start being an individual, you're a team. It's almost like a company you've incorporated. You got yes. shareholders, two major ones. And every time you have turn, then you got more shareholders. Yeah, correct. All right. Let them walk by the fridge, and every time you go to get a drink, we see this thing up on the first piece of paper called household budget. I think it's not asking questions. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? What revenue mean? I mean, I'm just saying, what expense mean? That's something that I spend on our juice you drink it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, very well said. Thank you for sharing with us. I'm going to push on, I think, Ms. Kelly or to. Jeremy Kelly is the last one, then we can begin our session. Ms. Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this fine morning? I'm good, and you? I'm well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Ms. Kelly, tell us a little bit about you. Uh, my name is Trinique Kelly. Oh, Trinique, I'm sorry. Yes. I've been working in the financial industry for the past five years. Mm -hmm. I'm employed at Credit Suisse, <laughs> and my reason- well, I know why you laugh at that. You reason. know why, I guess. <laughs> and my reason for um, taking this course um, for a better understanding professionally to gain more understanding within the financial field and also personally, like everyone has mentioned, you know, finance is a really important a crucial part of day-to-day -day living and even engaging with others and just to be able to understand for myself personally and to be able to educate others, my parents with um, retirement and just pass on the education, be an example and to pass on and see that, you know, this works, you understand it, you're able to stay focused with it and you'll be set hopefully for anything that may happen in the future, it will be okay. Great. Uh, what do you do at Credit Suisse? I deal with bond settlements in the back office for wealth management. What? 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 Mom, get over here, bond settlement? Like what type of bond? We deal with the T bills, our treasury bills with um, Zurich and Euro bonds. Those are my two products. Wow, that is excellent. Well, we got operations too. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, fantastic. Excellent. Uh, we know why we laugh at Credit Suisse, right? Yeah, we know the temperature right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it ain't only Credit Suisse, it's the whole banking industry. Industry, exactly. Ah, uh, boy. Uh, what a name, SVB? Yeah. It's got a whole snowball rolling down here. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, I hope Credit Suisse can weather the storm. Uh, I think they will. In fact, the Bank of Switzerland or someone <coughs> came in just to show up Credit Suisse the other day, am I correct? Yeah, they're trying, well, the first by now competitor UBS now, they're um, dealing with the whole merger acquisition. Right professional period right now that we're in. Fantastic. That's what it is. Uh, I don't think you have anything to worry about now. Credit is a long, long thing within this industry. Uh, that's uh, one of them blue chips of the industry. They really this thing. As you know, these things go in cycles, but every seven to 10 years, you have a cycle where there are kind of people and so forth. Uh, Economic factors are dictating it, uh, particularly in the US where the Fed keeps on raising the interest rate. Uh, yes. And they're trying to get their inflation under, the, under control. 
and uh, they're just going to do some contractions in the economy. And because of the internet and so forth, all of the economies are so interlinked. Yes. You know, uh, but anyway, uh, fantastic. So you trade, you settled born. Sir. Oh, wow. Do you find that interesting? Yes, I do. <laughs> I really do. And I. What's the most interesting aspect of your job? Um, interesting part for me is, I'd say, dealing with the counterparties and like just being able to make sure you know we have the correct instructions and everything that we need for settlement like once i have my settlements they are my daily achievements i'm like yes okay we get this dead today so wow. that's always a win i take my small wins daily <laughs> Mom, <laughs> do you have any failed settlement with that um no it was just i would say the urgency um, it brings up, no, I wouldn't say a bit of anxiety, but you know, just have to manage everyone's expectation mm -hmm. and be able to um, ensure them that, you know, there's nothing wrong, you know, you'll be able to settle this, no panic. And just to give them that reassurance daily because they come with a lot of panic and urgency. Oh. Yeah. Mom, let me tell you something. If that was my money too, I panic and first thing too. <laughs> so, you know, I deal with them on it. If this was mine, I would have the same mentality. So I, I'm here for you. I, I'm on the same page with you. You know I, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you all for sharing. Uh, I'm going to ask Dimitri, you still there? Dimitri? Yes, sir. Dimitri, I have an observation. I will see if you pick up on your, this observation. What have you observed so far in this class so far? Everyone is back office in trading except me. No, no, even more <laughs> basic than that. Even more basic than that. It is always surprises me. But I shouldn't say I should not be surprised at this juncture. Oh. In this class, go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Let me see if you pick up Dimitri. I'm the only male. Ah. The ratio of females to males. And it's always just like this. There's always about five females and one or two guys. It, it, it never surprised. So, Females, and maybe God planned it that way. God, maybe God planned it that way. Because, well, you know, us as males, maybe we're hundreds and everything like that, you know. And however, I I once I once read this uh, article on this lady who was running to be the first president of Africa. As you know, the African tradition is that you do not teach females. They belong, they, they do domestic work, you don't teach them. Uh, you teach males. However, she flipped that in one of her planks. She said, if you teach a male, you teach an individual. You teach a female, you teach a potential nature. And the basic thing is, men can have children. They can contribute to them. <laughs> they can have children. And during the, a child's most formulative years, the greatest influence on them is their mom. But I do ask you ladies, you do have influence over men through relationships. Teach them to what you learn. All right, now let's get to this course material. Sorry if I rambled a little bit, but it was a pleasure meeting you all. Uh, I'm just looking for my module to open up on the screen so I can share my screen. Okay. Great. Uh, we're still there. Okay. Yes. 
Um, um, yeah. Can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so yes. we're on module four. And um, my, my style of teaching uh, ladies and gents is to be very interactive. I'm just gonna assume that prior to class, you would have read the material, so I will go through it rather quickly. Uh, because again, we're all adults here. So um, and let me see if I get some of this stuff minimizing off the screen. Okay. So oh. So this is what you for. Uh, and the time uh, time value of me. Uh, as I said on many times, uh, you will always find them the day the, the two things they always marry in here is time and money. Uh, there is a relationship between time and money uh, because given enough time, money can grow all of its own if you leave it alone. What do I mean by that? I mean that uh, we will get into this concept a little later called uh, interest. Uh, we have various types of interest, but money earns interest for the most part. And if that interest is reinvested, suppose that interest is automatically reinvested, money has a life of its own. It will keep growing. Given time, it will grow to be a phenomenal amount. There go all these things about compounding and so forth like that. But having said that, uh, let's, first couple of things is, uh, they introduce you to the concept of interest. And the first introduction is simple interest. Uh, has everybody, does anybody have any uh, problems in determining simple interest versus compound interest? Any questions? Okay. I mean, I know all you are smart, uh, but there any questions? Basically, so simple interest basically tells you what you will earn at a given interest rate for a given period of time. And simple interest assumes that you will take the interest away and do something with it. You won't, you won't uh, reinvest the interest. Fair enough? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, there is this concept called compounding interest, which is one of the most Simple, <laughs> but one of the most phenomenal, fundamental value of money management. Compounding interest is only, instead of taking the interest away and only reinvesting the principal, such as is done in simple interest, compound interest takes that interest, adds it to the principal, and you establish a new level of principle that you're, that you're reinvesting the money. Okay. Uh, who is familiar with the concept of simple interest? Anyone? Oh, yeah. the, who, the young lady from C5. You there? Tell me I'm you. here. Great. You, you know about compound interest, right? Yes, I think. Okay, I have a question for you. I want to show you this how this how phenomenal compound interest. And this is open to anyone. Does everybody have a financial calculator? Mm -hmm. Yes, no? No. No. Okay. This is a question we're gonna ask you when I want to really want. <clears throat> If an individual, say that again. Go ahead. 
They put him in the reserve. Starting out at 21, they get the first job. And they are able to, and they put aside a thousand dollars a year at a rate of 5%. How much will they have by the time they retire at 65? I want you all to write down my question. I don't want to answer now. We can come back to it. Right, we 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 can calculate that uh, um, year by year, but is, is there is there an actual formula where you can calculate it based on that? Because I know at five percent per annum, that's going to increase the first thousand by fifty, and then now uh, you have to do the compound interest on the second thousand of one thousand and fifty, and then so on and so forth. So, so are you saying that you really don't want to do that forty-five times? Pardon me. You really don't want to do that 45 times. Yeah. Exactly. So so before I stress myself out and do that 45 times, I want to ask the question, is there a calculation um, that actually um, that, that, that's going to give you that answer? Well, okay, we are everybody because that's another one. Let's just say he just put the thousand dollars a year and leave it there for 25 years without ever bothering him, but he don't add a thousand every year. So there's two questions. And a very good question, Dimitri. Excellent question. I'm going to pick your curiosity. And I'm going to ask you just to be patient for a little while as we read along. Okay? Holding all the questions. But the answer to your question is yes. But let me go do it. Okay? Yes, sir. So, uh, Dimitri was asking about. Do I got to do this all the time? Uh, compounding interest example. This is on page three. Mr. and Mrs. Smith have a six month old baby. Mrs. Smith just received a $1,000 bonus, $1,000 bonus. Should they buy some new furniture or invest in a security earning 10% per annum or some compounding of interest? Future value of the furniture. Oh no, let me change this question around. Let me, let me change this. Mr. and Mrs. Smith have a six month old baby. Mrs. Smith just received a thousand dollar bonus. Should they go on vacation to Miami on a shopping spree or invest in a security earning 10% per annum, assuming the bounding of interest? Future value of the furniture. No, future value of the vacation. The vacation will start losing money right from the beginning when you buy the plane ticket, pay for the hotel, and you gotta buy food and everything. You gotta have a good time now. Okay, and Mrs. Smith may come back with another one, but they will immediately start losing value and in 20 years will be worth less. Future value of the board. Future value is 1,000 times 1.1020 equals 1,000 times the interest factor of 6.72. So $1,000 in 20 years will be equal to 6,730. Now, Dimitri. Hello? Yes, I am. Yeah. You see, the guy didn't do it 20 times. What he did is, you see that thing they call 1.1020. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is what they call the future value factor. Mm -hmm. Okay, now at the back of the book, at the end of this section, there are some tables. Can we fast forward to that? Or, yes, or, I don't know if you all have the privilege. I have, I have two, two very quick, quick, important questions. Um, the first one, I just want to be sure. I noticed that they did the 1,000 by the 6.73%. 
I noticed that the security earnings was 10% per okay, annum. I don't want to, I don't want to mix up that 6.7B. That is a factor. That's not okay. a percent. Okay. And their earning is 10%. So go ahead, so but continue. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that was the only thing that was throwing me off there a little bit because I noticed it said 10%, but I noticed that all everything in the calculations didn't reflect anything of 10%. But my second question, um, will we be will we be required to memorize these these um, formulas or will they be provided to us in the exam? You will not be required to memorize these formulas. Um, what will be given to you in the exam is what they call the future and present value table. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we go to those? Yes, sir. You said the back of the book, the textbook? It's at the back, no, it's at the back of this module. Oh, the back of the module, okay. Anybody else found the pages yet? So let me show you what they look like. This is what they look like. No, that, that's not in, I don't see that. That's not in module four, at least. No. That's not in module four. It's not in the back of our module four. The last page on our module four is um, the calculate the FWD USD euro rates spot. That's the last page that I'm seeing, uh, 20, page 25. Okay, all right. I remember saying that though, but I'm just trying to find where I did. I did see that same that printout. Let's see that. Now, if someone can find those, uh, if you could tell the rest of the class where they are. No. Okay. Yes, I found it. All right, can you tell the rest of the class where they are? This is two pages right before the Bahamian legal system. It don't have numbers on it. Okay. Is it still module four? Yes, it's module four. Two pages before Bahamian legal system? Yeah. You, do you find it in the hard copy or? Yeah, in the hard copy. Okay, mine, mine is probably missing those two pages because I don't see it. It's in the section that says fundamentals of portfolio management after module four. Oh, okay. look at those pages, yeah. But I just want you to know fundamentals of portfolio management is module four too. Yeah. I'm just waiting for everybody to catch it. I don't want to lose anybody in this page. Okay. Okay. I, I think mine is missing that. Yeah, mine is missing it as well. Yeah. All right. If you send it to my email, uh, who needs it? I could send these on to you. That's not a problem. But if you look at my screen, the major was very concerned about learning these formulas and so forth. Okay, on my screen is what they call present value and future value table. Table one is the future value interest factor for a single cash flow 
and they give you the formula. Okay, Dimitri, got that? That's the formula. Yes, what they have done is taken that formula and created various scenarios uh, and with the factor, with the thing being, the question he asked, what will $1 be worth if I invested $1 and for one year at 1%? The factor would then be one year, 1%, that's the factor. This factor takes this formula and incorporates all that information for you. So, and this is for a single cash flow, not multiple cash flow. Investing in the money one time and leaving it and just letting the interest roll over. So, that person invested a thousand dollars for 20 years at 10 percent, right? You got it? Let me go back yes. up. Every, uh, no, Dimitri, we all can see the, the factor sheet if I move from this page. Okay. Okay, so what they did, invested $1, uh, well, they invested $1,000 at 10% for 20 years, right? When I look across here, I look for the factor 10%. Then I look down here and I look for the 20, which in this case, the factor, the period here is be, being measured in years and it's it's 20 periods a year. Dimitri, do you see the factor? Yeah, that, that's in 6.7. 6. What, what does that say? It, it's kind of small. That's yeah. what 6.73. 6.73, 6 okay. Let me see if I could increase the screen size a little bit. All right, ten percent. All right, boom. Oh yeah, that's that's better. Okay, everybody can see it. Hey, ten percent for. I believe I can see it too much. Go back a little bit and take it down there. Anyway, if once they know what it is, uh, this, this interest rate factor will do, that is the equivalent of you trying to do it all by yourself. And so, Excuse me, folks. I know I'm jumping around a little bit by increasing my screen size. I, I think I did something really crazy here. Anyway, I'll find it later. But, uh, Okay, we're back. Okay, present value, future value. So 10% uh, for 20 periods gives you the factor of 6.73. What they have done, Dimitri, here is taken that same thing that you would have done, like taking the 1,000 multiplied it by 10% and then taking that. $1,010 in one planet by that, and carrying it all over for the next 20 years, 20 years. They've broken it down into what they call a factor. So once you take your principal, which was $1,000, because remember, this is a factor, there is only $1 invested here. So if this is the factor for $1, then the, 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 the result for $1,000 would just be 1,000 times this factor. 
Is that pretty straightforward to some everybody, or do I need to go through that again? Um, I, I didn't guess as clear as much. Mr. Donatan, um, you probably need to go over. I, I, I understand um, the 6.73, but the fair value factor, I, I guess I probably just need to scroll down probably when I get the sheets to find it. Because the 1.1020, that's what I was looking at. Because like you say, that's a fair value factor. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But I mean, well, I tell you, We'll go through some problems later on, and we are at a distinct disadvantage by not having these sheets. Uh, but I'll try to put it on the screen for you. Is that fair enough, Ma? And as best as I could. Yeah, I guess seeing it, you know, it would help you, but in, you know, in the mind, or you're just trying to work it out to get it to. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's not a, it's not, initially, it's a strange concept. And uh, you got to test it. All right, so what I'm going to do right here, uh, you know, I told you all I believe in, in participation, right? So guess what I'm going to do right here? We can work through some sample problems that I found. And then we can take turns working with you. So, Vonette. Hi, Vonette. Are you there, Vonette? Hi. Okay, Vonette, why don't you read the first question? And let's see how we we'll solve it. Okay. If you wish to accumulate one thousand four hundred, sorry, one hundred and forty thousand in thirteen years, how much must you deposit today in an account that pays an annual interest rate of fourteen percent? All right. I want to skip that one. That's a little bit too involved. <laughs> Let's go to number two. <laughs> what will 247,000 um, grow to be in nine years if it is invested today in an account with an annual interest rate of 11%? Okay. All right. So a couple of things I want to know here. So the principal amount is 247000 Yeah? Yes. They're asking you, what will it grow to be in X number of years, right? Right. All right. So you will find, when you start getting into a lot more factor times, you're going to look for little hints like this in terms of what type of problem is this? Is this a present value problem? Is it a future value problem? That's a future value, right? Because it says grow to be. You got it. The little hint here is grow. Okay. Right. You can't grow backwards, right? So, yeah, you could, but anyway. 247,000 is the principal. What's the time frame? Nine years. Nine years, or in our case, really nine periods. Okay. What is the rate? 11%. Great. So what I do, 
is I slip over here. Mm -hmm. Interest rate factor table. And so tell me I can do how I should talk with this one. Uh, um, are we looking at column that has the 11% to the top? Right. And we're strolling down to nine. That's correct. Nine period. Yes. Okay, so we're using the 2.5580. Yes. Okay. Now, Miss, you're going to have to show me how to set it up because I don't follow that. Is it 247,000 times by? No, it's whatever that factor is. 2.5580. That's right, times 247,000. Oh, oh, okay. So 200, 2.5580 times 247,000. Uh-huh. What'd you get? Working it on right now. I'm do this on my phone. You are in my phone. <laughs> it's the quickest thing. I don't have a financial calculator, but is it six hundred and thirty-one thousand eight hundred and twenty-six dollars? And then oh, I yeah. have another, right. another question. Do we not round off? Because in another, I think on your sheet, I noticed that they rounded it off. So even with yeah. this two point five five eight zero, will we not round it off to say two point five six? When we're doing the multiplication? Yes, you can. What, what was your answer? Was it you said six three one eight two six? Six. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. So let's see if we were right. In addition, look what else I have. Okay, see number two. Look at my screen. Oh. So we'll be right. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Overall, then. Yeah, but I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Your formula, you have n equals nine. We we have to pay attention to that or just go based okay. on the question. Wait, wait, wait. If we were to get a financial calculator, right? Uh-huh. Like a Hewlett Packard. N is the on the calculator, normally is the period connotation. N. Number of periods. N. Okay. Number of periods. And I equals 11% interest rate, right? Right. PV is the present value. That's the sum you were using, right? Correct. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm writing it all down. All right. Now, come on, guys. If you're not getting this, please, everybody speak up. Because it can just get more difficult going from here. Wait, wait, they're breaking up. I don't know who it is who's speaking. Okay. Somebody is where you do you do need a financial calculator like like say this is number five. 
using my table, if you wish to accumulate 197,000 in five years, how much must you deposit a day in an account that pays a quoted annual interest rate of 13% of semi-annual compounding of interest? That's a present value question. Let's go to number six. Dimitri. Yes, sir. Okay, why don't you read number six and let's do this all together. Okay. What will $153,000 grow to be in 13 years if it is invested today in an account with a quoted annual interest rate of 10% with monthly compounding of interest? Great. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's find out the factors. What is N? What is number of periods? 13 years. Mm -hmm. All right. Are you sure about that? Uh, no. It would be 13 years because the compound is monthly. So it would be, would it, would it be, would it be 156? Tell them how you got it. Um, the compound is, 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 is uh, the compounding of interest happens monthly. So it's 12 months in a year and it's over a 13 year period. So it will be um, 12, times 13. 12 times 13, yeah. All right. Now I know some people ain't get it. Uh -huh. Repeat that, repeat that. <laughs> okay. Slowly Dimitri, slowly Dimitri. <laughs> Right. So, so they're asking one hundred fifty-three thousand. What is going to be? Would it grow to be in thirteen years if it is invested today in an account with a quoted annual interest rate of ten percent, with a monthly compounding and compounding of interest? So the interest is compounding monthly. So you would mul multiply the thirteen years by the amount of months. So it'll 12. be 20, 12 multiplied by 13. Okay. Which is to give you the 156. Okay. Now, Dimitri, explain to me what is the significance of compounding? Uh, what does compounding mean in layman terms? Um, it's it's basically adding on top of the of the current value. So it would be um yeah it, it, it would basically mean that the value of of the initial deposit will grow um based on the amount of interest earned month over month yes okay but in order to understand why is multiplying 12 times 13 compounding tells the potential investor how often he will be paid interest Yes? Yes, sir. So if I'm compounding monthly, it means that I am going to get interest paid to me monthly. Therefore, I have the ability, because I get my hands on that interest monthly, to reinvest it and earn interest on the interest. Take, for instance, if they had been said, interest is compounded semi-annually. That means I only am paid interest twice a year. I only get my greedy ads on my interest twice a year. So I only have the ability to reinvest that interest twice a year. If they pay it to be monthly, I got the ability to reinvest that interest 12 times a year. Ergo, that's why you multiply the number of compounding periods within the year by the number of years. Everybody understand that? I think so. I think okay. I get that part. So yes, Paul, sir. Paul, are you there or are you going back to sleep? No, I'm still here. Okay, so tell me, how many times did I get my eyes on interest if they tell me interest is paid quarterly? in the year. That'd be four times. 
Why are you running away again? Anitra. Anitra, you there? Hi, Anitra. What's your sense? I'm out. Hi, Anitra, you didn't talk about yourself. Yeah, I joined the class late. I sent you a private message. I thought I, I thought I, I thought I, we're going to talk about later on, okay? So, Benitra, if I were to be paid interest semi annually, how many times will I be paid interest in the year? Repeat the question, sorry. Oh, okay. If twice, twice. Sorry. Yes, ma'am. You got it. So rule of thumb, you got to look at how many years, how many years you got, which is 13, and what is the compounding periods in the year, okay? Whether it's monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or just annually, all right? Now, so going back to Dimitri, Dimitri said, we take the 13 years and multiply it by 12 because in every year we are going to be paid interest 12 times during that year. So over the course of 13 years, we would have been paid interest 156 times. Right, Dimitri? Yes, sir. Great. Now, if I were to jump to my, okay, so we've decided in equals 13. Yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, there's another little tricky thing. What is I? Uh, I I is still eleven percent. You sure about that? You sure about that? No, sorry, I, 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 I still, You sure about that? Yeah, because that, that that's the amount of interest being paid monthly. You sure about that? No, because so that is annually. annually. The ten percent is annually, so we need to divide that. Ah, yeah. yes. You got it. Remember now, even though you're paid 12 times a year, you're only paid a proportionate amount of interest. One twelfth of the interest of the annual interest you're paid every month. So you are absolutely correct. And guess what? This is where you need a financial calculator. Even in my table, because first of all, if I was to go to my time, I'll be paid it, right? I mean, 12 divided by 10 divided by 12 is a factor of 0. 0.00 something, okay? Uh, and my table do not have that type of factor. It, and it don't go out to 122, okay? So what I'm going to do for next class, I am going to find an online financial calculator. So let me see if I can do that. Right now. Will we be able to take that online financial calculator into the exam, sir? Yeah, no, sir. You don't have to go buy a Hewlett Packard. <laughs> I mean, you try it, no, sir. Can you advise us which which um financial calculator we should purchase, uh, um, sir? So so we can have it. Of course, we have it for next class. Yeah, there's always Hewlett Packard. Uh, uh, there's a lot of them. I mean, we can use a scientific calculator. <laughs> Wouldn't it have some of the same symbols? Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I don't want to say yes, because I don't use a financial calculator. Um, but we will need a financial calculator for the exam. 
man are trying to get us to get us a scientific calculator because I could easily borrow that from my nephew or something. Uh, to buy a whole calculator that I'm not going to use. Man, you are today, man. Are you not even using the new in finance? <laughs> we have calculators at our desk. The little, you know, the old ones that do roll with the tape. No, that ain't a financial calculator. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So a financial calculator, future value. You see the payment, interest a year, number of period, present value. So number of period as Dimitri determined it was 156. Yes? Interest, interest per year is, I'm gonna put in 10, but they would have they would have done this uh, in the background. Um, let, me, let me see here now. Wait. And the amount, and what is the amount of the question? One hundred and fifty-three thousand. Right, right. There's no periodic pay payment calculate. Uh, payment needs to be. And do I have the right one? Finance, the finance charge in the years and the future value period of payment year number 10. The rate of change is see as such as a BA or HPTLCP. That's the calculator I use. Uh, this is zero. Let me see if I put it to zero. Future value would be okay. So this, what I have to do is take this ten percent interest, interest divided by twelve. All right. So uh, what I, I think what I got to do is actually divide. The ten percent by twelve and put in that fraction. Point eight three zero point eight three. Okay, that's what it can go to be five hundred and fifty eight thousand zero nine eight. Look at the total interest. You initially put in 153,000, right? Look at this. Look at the total interest that was in. Um, can you confirm it with your answer sheet, please? Sure, sure but I'm going to go to the, I have to go to the Bible and I got him an old human pocket when I first started my bed, Roy West. And in yeah. it was ten ten percent, right? Ten. Uh, okay, we want answers. Uh, who was that who wanted the answer? That was me. I just wanted to confirm. Okay, I'm going to, we're going to confirm this answer right now. Okay, you're number six, right? Okay, you satisfied? Answer five five eight three eight six. Let me go back to 
calculator. 558 or 3889 for 098. So that could be a rounding factor. Are we good on that one, ladies and gents? Yes, sir. Ladies? Mr. Donaldson, just a quick question. I know sometimes, like you say, with using these financial calculator yeah. and also with rounding off. So sometimes just how we how we see it here, where it's off by a few dollars. Um, in the exam, will it be marked as a zero or you know, when you're let me put it to you this way? The choices are gonna be so far apart that you can only even one whatever is closest to your answer you get, that's the answer. See, suppose I had done this. I don't know how much rounding. Suppose let's just say three. See, it's out of three, three, three. Okay, taking it out maybe five decimal places. Okay, you see how much the change in the decimal places, the number of decimal places. So they taking it out to several decimal places. I just took it out to two. So. It rounded down. Are we still there? Yeah, we're still here. All right, let's try another one. I mean, the only way you get to me is the people are practicing. Um, now we can maybe, okay. I'm just trying to look for the future value. I don't want to get into a new piece yet. I'm going to try to save that for the last class. Because in the next class, we'll be going a little bit faster. And then you'll use a couple of things so you know the tools you'll be using. Okay. Well, let's go back up to the chair. Let's go back to our calculator that I've just discovered and do an old one, number two again. What will 247,000 go to be in nine years if it is invested today in an account with an annual interest rate of 11%? Uh, who wants to try that one on the calculator? When I say I'll do the calculator, you just tell me what to do. So what is the number of periods? You, you can put the question mark on the board. It's nine years, right? Nine. Nine is the number of periods. What's the interest rate? 11%. What's it? Okay, let me go back to it. I'm yeah. 11. Now, no. it comes with an annual no. It's a 2.5580. Why oh, are we looking at the thing I'm sure. Now we're doing number two again. We're doing number two. Yeah. Again. So the annual interest rate is 11%. Yeah, interest rate. Oh, oh, yeah, that's the shit, the pick up sheet. So we're not using the future value percentage? Yeah. yeah. You can, you can use that sheet, but what I'm telling you, I want you to start getting used to the calculator. But there are problems that you're gonna run into that that sheet is not gonna be able to help you with. Okay. okay. So 11% no. then. Why 11, Dimitri? Uh, we'll go to be no, interesting. No, no, no. Dimitri, why did he say the interest rate is 11%? Do you agree with us? I mean, based on the question, since we're not using the sheet based on the question, um, the interest rate, the annual interest rate for the uh, invested day with cloud of nine years would be 11%. How many compounding periods are there? Pardon? How many compounding periods are there in this question? Nine. It's nine. Nine, yeah. 
And he was not one three. My question is wrong. How many compounding periods in the year? One. One. Yeah. Okay. All right, so it is 11%. I agree. What is the present value? 247,000. There are no periodic payments. No. Great, so we'll calculate. Answer is 631835. Let's go to the answers number two. 631835. Okay. Um that 631835 is inclusive of the initial deposit, correct as well, right? That is what your entire future value is there. Okay. Okay. So we might as well use this um online calculator or in the exam. That's, that's much easier. Well, they don't use your online calculator in the exam because they figure you may go someplace else. No question with the exam because I know that it said it would be multiple choice. So I guess we'll have we use the calculator and then we'll just choose from the multiple choice answers. That's correct, ma'am. The closest answer is what you think that you are sure. All right. So our answer could range anywhere from two decimal places to about, say, seven. And I would say, to be safe, most universities, they use about four decimal places. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to send the sheet to you guys so you have to practice. Uh, we'll work from this. I will not send the answer sheet as well. Okay. Because uh, homework for you all guys next class, we can work through this. I then work through a couple of them. I show you where the calculator is. Everybody got the uh, URL address for this calculator. I mean, it's so abundant, you can find them online. I mean, I just went online and picked the first one. All right, there's a message here. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, if you all want to, you're going to include me in, in the group chat. Whatever. Uh, so I want to begin to introduce to you the concept of present value. If, if you're driving a car and you're saying in the car, the gear shift for future value is dry. Okay. What y'all think the gas shift for present value is? Reverse. What they do, they, they, uh, I give you the future value. And they're saying, well, I want to have this amount in 10 years. How much I got to put aside today in one lump sum in order with the interest to have accumulated this desired sum? Okay. Now I'm going back to reading from the class. The class manual. Uh, So I'm going to close all this out. Uh, calculating the present value. I'm back to the manual, even though I don't have it up on the screen. I'm reading it from my hard copy. When we discuss future value, we are thinking of questions such as what will my 1,000 investment grow to earn? Go to if it earns 6% return every year for the next five years. The answer to this question is what we call the future value of 1,000. 
invested in 6% for five years. Check that the answer is about 1,300. Another type of question that comes up even more often in financial management is obviously related to future value. Suppose you need to have 10,000 in 10 years and you can earn 6% on your money. How much do you have to invest today to reach your goal? You can verify that the answer is about 5,584. How do we know this? So they go in to explain to you uh, the logic of it, which is basically the lead up to the to the question. So what I'm going to do is finance calculator. Again, uh, they are asked. Okay, they had asked me, you are saying that the future value of $1 invested at 10 cents here, we now ask a slightly different question. Okay, suppose you need 10,000, so I'm gonna put over here in the future value, they allow me to. I want to. I want to do present value. Okay. Okay. So it's going to ask me. I switched to. You see up here. I switched here. Speak the value. You see down there. Change what they ask for the present value. When I it to the present value is going to ask me what is the future value I'm trying to obtain. So the number of periods here is 10 years. The interest rate that is being paid is 6%. Periodic payments is nothing. And ironically enough, the amount I want to earn the future value is 10,000. So they're asking me what is the future value, what is the period, what is the present value that I need? So I'm going to calculate. Present value is 5,583. And here in the book, they say you can verify that the answer is about 5,584. How do we know this? We just calculate. Yes? Okay. Present value for, uh, okay. Present value of multiple periods. Suppose you need to have 1,000 in two years. If you can earn 8%, how much do you have to invest to make sure that you have 1,000 when you need? In other words, what is the present value of 1,000 in two years if the relevant rate is 8%? Canvas. Why don't you do that one for me? Tell me what you want me to put in. What is N, Canvas? Mr. Donatan, I'm going to be a little honest right here. I was a bit lost, and then my daughter was making a lot of noise. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll do my endeavor. Um, how many years did you say? It was two years. Okay, so I think the period will then be two years. Okay. I heard you say the interest rate is 5%, so that will be the now, I. The interest rate is 8% here. Oh, 8%? Yes. Okay, so you can put the 8% there. Now, where you where I got lost is I don't understand, you know, the future value amount and it's showing in a negative. Why why is that? That that's where I got lost and I was trying to Okay, it isn't a negative, it is 
it's gonna be it, 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 the way your calculator does it is it's just a factor. You'll be able to take over ten thousand. Okay, so they're asking you, what will you be able to take on of this account? Uh, you want to be able to take on a thousand dollars. So they're asking you what you got to put in it today in order to take out a thousand. So your dollar value there's too much, okay. Okay, so I'm cutting it down. We all set. How many compounding periods in any given year? Um, that will be two. How many compounding periods in any given year? It's one. One is annually. Because this is annually, right? Absolutely. Okay. Agreed. One, if it's annually. So we're going to calculate. And it tells me I need to put in $857.34, which the book verifies. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to put $857.34 if we want to get this future value of $1,000. That is correct. So that's where the $1,000 come in. The future value amount is the amount that you want to get but we're trying to find out what is the present value that we would need to put it in order to get that. You couldn't have said it better. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, guys, uh, I'm gonna save this calculator to my favorites because I wanna use this again next week. Uh, but I'm gonna we're gonna be wrapping up now because I want you to read over the material. I will send you the sheets. Uh, I see a chat. Okay, keep invitation pen there. You want? Uh, I'm gonna stop sharing. You're going to send the, the, the questions for us to practice and also the future value sheet as well, right? Because uh, some of us know that in our textbook. Yeah, you mean the periodic tables? Oh, yes, the periodic table. Yes, sir. I, I don't want you to use the period. I want you to go find if I can because I've seen okay. the periodic tables are sort of limited. They can only allow you to do one type of problem. Okay. All right. That's not wrong. All right. Uh, okay. Again, I will send it out today before I leave here. Please practice it. I mean, like anything else, the concept in the beginning is very simple. Then you get questions to get a little bit more complex, but they sort of like weave many things into it. Like uh, Joe intends to go to college uh, in 18 years. Uh, and his college will cost him uh, $50,000 a year for the next four years. How much does Joe need to save today? See, that's the, that's the and first of all, you got to figure out how much Joe needs to have in the end in terms of, you got to find the present value of 50000 for four years, so Joe needs to have that on hand when you start college. Then you need to figure out what amount that Joe have to give either in a lump sum or for the next 18 years have accumulated that amount. So it gets very complex. They can get very interwoven. Uh, so please, I practice the questions as much as you could. Uh, I will send you the answer. I mean, yeah, I'll send you the answer too because how you get the more, the most important thing is do you know how to get there? All right. Does anybody have any questions about the book? Good. I will be picking up the pace next week because we got a lot of material to cover and they only give me four classes to do it in. <laughs> All right. So um, and a lot of today is getting the each other. Uh, I think everybody has my email address as well as my telephone number. Uh, so please, if there's no more questions, 
Uh, I, I, I didn't get your number, so sorry, go ahead. I didn't get your number. Okay, my number is 44 mm -hmm. 8688. Okay. Now, for all of y'all who under 50, I my bear time is 830. Don't call me after 830. <laughs> I know you all young folks, you all have Dracula. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I was only start studying to have a clock in the night. Don't call me. <laughs> All right. So everybody, please enjoy the remainder of, of your weekend. And I wish to tell every one of you guys you are already winners because you have the gumption and the courage enough to take this class and to try and better yourself. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and God bless.